The difference between bones and joints may seem a bit academic. That is to say, when you look at this very simple setup, it's a very simple mesh, just two bones. And when I grab this first bone, the mesh responds exactly the way you expect it to. When I select the second bone, again, it deforms exactly the way you expect it to deform. You look at the way the bone moves, and you look at the way the surrounding mesh moves, and you think, yep, that makes absolute sense to me. That is, until you grab the last joint. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to recreate the same movement in that bone, but in this case, the mesh is not responding at all. And that is because at no point was it this bone that was def driving the deformation of this mesh. It was always this joint that was driving the deformation. So really, you should be looking at the rotation of this tiny little element here, rather than the rotation of this entire element. Now, of course, in terms of visual feedback, this is much better, which is probably a reason why it's there. But, you know, it's easy to get fooled by it. Now, you may think, well, fine, great. In reality, I will never move this bone doing this. That's probably true, but you may actually inadvertently do so if you start using uh, constraints. So let me go to another example where it's maybe not so obvious that you that you were making that mistake. And this this is like a very simple foot rig that I created. It's a very badly done, by the way. Um, this joint should have been up here, and well, I'm sure there's other things wrong with it. But it's really just here for demonstration purposes. Um, I've given myself um, an IK goal. So that's all fine and dandy. What I really want to do now is I want to create a little rig, or a little hierarchy, I should say, to move this goal around in a more interesting way. That is to say, I want to give myself a few different pivot points around which I can rotate the goal. So, I'm just going to create a locator. I'm going to place it where the heel is. I'm not, I'm not being overly precise here, by the way. This is no great uh, example of rigging. It's really more to explain a few principles here. And I'm going to duplicate this locator. I'm going to match the position of that locator to the toe. Again, duplicate it. And so I've given myself three locators. That is to say, three different pivot points that I'm going to use to drive this the rotation of this goal. Um, I'm going to use parent and place to attach this locator to that locator and this locator is going to be attached to that one and the goal is going to be attached to this locator. So what I get now is I'm going to get out of setup for a second. Oh, bother. What happens if I zero it all out? Is that better? That's the one. I should have thought of that one. So I grab this locator and the foot behaves the way it should behave. The toe behaves exactly the way I want it to behave. And the ball of the foot doesn't. Because what I really was hoping for is for this bone to stay put. That is to say, this end joint should remain where this locator is. So the easiest way to do that is to uh, crikey. Sometimes it's difficult to click on these things. So the easiest way to do that is to positionally constrain this locator, this uh sorry joint to this locator. There you have it. I'm going to switch the mesh up for a second. So when I now go into uh, out, when I come out of setup, again, this works fine, this still works fine, and this, great. 
works exactly the way I wanted. This that is to say, this toe says put. That is until I switch on the mesh. The mesh is now moving away from this bone. And what I've done is I've done exactly the same like I did. I've made the same mistake, I should say, like I made in the first example. I really, I really should not have been constraining this joint. I should have been constraining this joint. So let's get into setup. Let's get rid of this positional constraint. It's clearly not doing the, doing the job. And I'll just use a directional constraint on this joint. So this joint really should be directionally constrained to this locator. There. Now let's see how it behaves. That's more like it. Now the, the slightly surreal thing is that this bone in both examples really did the same thing visually but the result is very different. But again, that's really just because we're de dealing with joints, not bones.